Hello everyone and good morning from New Delhi. Welcome to day two of ICDRI 2022. In this session, we will learn more about the CDRI Fellowship Program. Please join us today in celebrating our first cohort of fellows and uh, to welcome the second cohort for the year 2022-23. The moderator for this session will be Dr. Mona Anand. She's the Director of Research and Knowledge Management at CDRI. A trained architect and planner, Dr. Mona has been involved in policy and practice of safe and sustainable habitat development in South Asia. Over to you, Dr. Mona. Thank you, Suchi. Greetings, everyone. Um, I'm really enamored by the magnificence of the panel uh, we have today. And it is indeed my privilege to be moderating this session for two reasons. One, this relates to the CDRI Fellowship Program something that's, uh, that we are all so proud of at CDRI. And two, for the colleagues and mentors who are gracing this session today. Thank you very much for joining us. So let me begin the session by first introducing to you our guests this morning. To my far left in the studio here is Professor Ravi Sinha. He works at the Department of Civil Engineering at the Indian Institute of Technology, Mumbai in India. We have in the studio with us Professor Saturu Nishikawa. He works at the Disaster Mitigation Research Center in Nagoya, and he's traveled all the way from Tokyo to be with us at ICDRI today here in Delhi. Welcome, sir. Joining us virtually this morning are Dr. Char Charlotte Benson. We call her Charlie Benson also. Uh, she is the Principal Disaster Risk Management Specialist at the Asian Development Bank and Professor Jim Hall, who's a member of the UK Prime Minister's Council for Science and Technology. And he's a contributing author to the Nobel Prize winning fourth assessment report of the IPCC. We welcome you, Charlie and Professor Hall. Along with um, Ms. Marjorie Green, who served at the Earthquake Engineering Research Institute in the United States, this August panel uh, has served as the international jury of the CDRI fellowship program since its inception in the last two years. Joining us in the studio, we will also have towards the latter half of the session, Mr. Kamal Kishore, Member Secretary, National Disaster Management Authority, Government of India, and the Indian co-chair of the CDRI's executive committee. So moving forward, the session is divided in uh, two segments. The first segment, um, we will give you a glimpse of the CDRI Fellowship Program and an update of the first cohort that is currently ongoing. This is really to celebrate the wonderful work our fellows have done in the last uh, 12 odd months. The second segment is a moment that our audience has been eagerly waiting for, the announcement of the second cohort of fellows of the program. So rather than CDRI offering to introduce the fellowship program to you all, I'd like to invite Professor Ravi Sinha to give you an overview of the program from the lens of an international juror. Over to you, sir. Actually, you know, let me mention this also with his vast experience of guiding a large number of research projects academically and as a practitioner. We are, you know, so privileged to have him as the juror, and uh, therefore I'm requesting him to provide an overview of the program. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mona. Uh, this is indeed uh, a privilege and a great pleasure to be a part of the jury and to participate in the CDRI activities of the fellowship program. Uh, let me just give a very, very quick overview of the uh, fellowship program. Uh, so, CDRI, as uh, is well known, recognizes the creation of disaster resilient infrastructure to be a complex endeavor. And uh, it also recognizes that the efforts need to be anchored in evidence based knowledge and practices. And these have to be learned, uh, these have to be captured, and these, of course, have to be conceived where uh, these don't exist. And uh, CDRI's knowledge initiatives are one such effort which are designed to foster innovative solutions 
cutting edge research and practical strategies that promote the resilience of infrastructure to climate risk and the disaster risk. And uh, CDRI fellowship programs are one important initiative under CDRI. It was launched in the year 2020 with the objective of investing in research and innovation to build back better and build forward better in a world navigating through global transitions because of climate change and increasing disaster risks. So, uh, uh, so let me just quickly touch upon what's different between the CDRI fellowship program and uh, many, many other fellowship programs which uh, exist around the world. Uh, so uh, CDRI very consciously decided uh, that uh, many of the member countries have fellowship programs which are uh, making a big difference in the landscape of their area of activities. So CDRI had to uh, come up uh, with a program which would be able to supplement them and add value to these programs. So based on that, the CDRI fellowship program was conceived and uh, one key differentiator between the CDRI program and the programs of the, uh, of the member countries is that uh, most of the programs of the member countries are what we consider as the in-situ program, which means that there would be institutions in the member countries which will host the fellows for the duration of the fellowship. CDRI very consciously decided that the fellowship programs are going to be conducted with the selected fellows based at their home. So uh, they would continue to work on their fellowship uh, endeavors while they are based in their home environment. And there are two reasons for that. First of all, uh, it allows their working environment to get enriched so that at the end of the fellowship program, they can continue to work in, on the same topic because of the infrastructure and the environment they have created. And secondly, uh, with, this, with the fellows being uh, based at their uh, home stations, it allows a larger, you can say, dissemination or diffusion of the CDRI fellows activities at their location. So, and at the same time, of course, it adds value to the fellowship programs of the member countries, which are uh, full time and based in the host countries. So, based on the in situ fellowship activities, uh, CDRI has uh, tried to create a community of practitioners by uh, very cautiously selecting outstanding uh, researchers of all age groups and also with diverse background. So, uh, so this is not a fellowship program focused on a particular thematic area and this is not also a fellowship program which is focused on a particular age group. The idea is that it's a diverse group in every way we can think of. They are going to co-learn from one another, they would challenge each other, and uh, they would uh, actually develop not just the solutions, but they would also help to crystallize what are the problems on which the solutions should be looked at. And uh, we are just so delighted as the jurors, the way the first fellowship uh, cohort has taken shape. And uh, we are looking forward to this as being an exciting journey for all the uh, all the fellows for the years to come, and we hope that they will continue to be engaged in the mission of disaster risk reduction and help to find solutions in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Sinha. Really heartening, you know, these words from you as a juror. And it's also interesting to understand from, you know, your, your narrative as to what do you look for when you are looking at these applications. So. Thank you very much. I now turn to Professor Nishikawa. He is a practitioner, very well-known practitioner, and he's been engaged in contributing to the development of national and global policy frameworks. Uh, Nishikawa-san, uh, we'd like to hear your reflections mm -hmm. on the relevance of this program as you yeah. see it. Yes, uh, it's my honor to be part of this ju uh, honorable jury member. And thank you very much for inviting me today. And I, I'd like to first uh, emphasize this fellowship program is a seed grant and providing financial support and peer learning opportunities for individuals designing solutions for real world program related to the resilience of infrastructure. I'd like to re really reiterate the point that it's relative to real problem solutions. 
and promising solutions with demonstrated applicability and potential for scale emerging from the program will be disseminated through the CDRI's network and opportunities for their implementation across contexts will be identified. The important point is that the output is not just research. It has to be uh, really implemented because we are dealing with infrastructures and infrastructures is always have to be practiced and implemented on the ground. The value proposition of the CDRI fellowship program lies in its potential to contribute to real solutions, to real problems, and influence the large discourse on resilient infrastructure. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Nishikawa-san. Thank you for also highlighting our focus on real problems and the, the realism in the solutions that we are seeking there and the focus on implementing them eventually once the projects are done. Thank you very much uh, for your intervention. Next, I turn to Dr. Benson. She is an eminent economist, and she's been deeply involved in the development and coordination of ADB's disaster risk management policy and the overall approach. Uh, Dr. Benson, we would welcome your insights on the first cohort of the fellows as you've seen them. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. and. Um, I'd like to begin by saying it's been a great privilege to be involved as a jury member in the CDRI fellowship program for the past two years. So thank you for having me. Um, so as many of you already know, the first cohort of CDRF, CDRI fellows was announced just over a year ago in March 2021. Those fellowships were awarded to 21 teams from nine countries um, for a variety of research projects, and as we've just heard, for a variety of real problems covering a range of types of natural hazard. I'm um, really delighted to say that these fellows have achieved considerable progress in their research, despite various challenges, not least, of course, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Their areas of research have included, for instance, the strengthening of road resilience using landslide susceptibility models, an assessment of the disaster and climate resilience of a major port, the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning to improve the coordination of disaster plans, policies, frameworks, goals and actions across different levels of government in a particular country, um, the development of a national landslide database and susceptibility map, a web-based application to monitor river migration at critical bridge infrastructure locations, and um, the development for transboundary infantry of high altitude wetlands for disaster reduction in the Himalayas. So as you can see, very much a set of genuine real world problems. Um, as part of their work, a number of the fellows have already successfully published their findings in academic journals, with further papers and presentations at international conferences planned. Um, and in the true spirit of peer learning, a number of the fellows have also participated in CDRI fellowship communities of practice to share knowledge and resources and provide mutual support and co-learning. These um, communities of practice have included a particularly active one on nature-based solutions. And we, we very much hope that the next cohort of fellows will engage with equal enthusiasm in these fora. As for the first cohort, as their fellowships come to an end, we'd like to take this opportunity as, as a group of um, jury members to celebrate this diverse group of solution seekers and to wish each of you the very best of luck in your onward journeys to build disaster resilience. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Benson. So we are at that moment where we are going to celebrate the first cohort that is at the last leg of their fellowship journey. And we have a short video uh, to share with you what they've been up to. Uh, may I have the video, please? Thank you.
The CDRI Fellowship Program provides financial support and peer learning opportunities for individuals designing solutions for real-world problems related to the resilience of infrastructure. In 2021, CDRI awarded fellowships to 21 teams from nine member countries. The first cohort of the fellowship is on the cusp of completing its journey with CDRI. CDRI is proud of the fellows and the knowledge and innovative solutions they have generated through the fellowship program. Moreover, the topic is more crucial than ever since we're reaching the tipping point where loss of biodiversity due to ecological disruption driven by human activities makes the world prone to zoonotic infections that can lead to pandemics as COVID-19. The CDRI Fellowship has contributed to expand my knowledge on climate adaptive infrastructure and has given me the opportunity to continue exploring the topic from a local perspective in Peru. Landslides are one of the critical phenomena that frequently lead to loss of life and property as well as causing severe damage to the natural resources and infrastructures. This research conducted with the financial support of the city organization. Every year, landslide and bombing result in significant economic and social losses like deeds, injuries and property destructions. The result of this research established an important tool for decision makers, planners and engineers. They can make rapid and well-grounded decisions to minimize and avoid the damage and losses caused by existing and future landslides. My CDRI project is on disaster resilience of bridges exposed to climate change and growing traffic load during design life. I started this research because one of the major challenges associated with the development of disaster resilience bridge infrastructure is to account for the bridge health degradation and transient nature of disasters over bridge service life. Results from one of the bridges show that the disaster resilience of the bridge decreases due to both intensity of the disaster and the level of bridge degradation. The outcome of this research has a potential application in maintenance and asset management of bridges. Nepal is a country that is prone to various disasters such as floods and landslides. Every year, there is huge loss of lives and infrastructure due to these disasters. I'm thankful to CDRI for supporting my research on landslides. The CDRI Fellowship uh, has been helping us to conduct the research and field work we proposed in Turi Hill region. So I'm proud to be a CDRI Fellow. I'm working on a CDRI research project that aims to high altitude wetland inventory for disaster risk reduction in the transboundary Himalayan region. This project considers climate change and its impact on the Himalayan glacier melting and fosters innovation in future wetland inventory. I believe this CDRI project can build up research capacity and promote research excellence in nature-based solutions for mountain disaster risk reduction. My topic is thermal stress testing of residential buildings using reference weather data. In today's world, there is a rise in the morbidity and mortality due to extreme climatic conditions such as heat waves and cold snaps. Uh, most deaths that occur in residences or buildings are mainly due to the thermal characteristics of the building and their local environment. To understand the extent of this problem, it is essential for us to identify capture and predict the extreme climatic events that are happening. CDRI has given us a platform to conduct long-term research to utmost importance of our Buddhist community, disaster resilient building construction practices on hilly slopes of Bhutan, a research compliance and recommendation for national adaptation will contribute towards resilient future by creating awareness on hilly settlements, mitigation and adaptation measures which are important in gearing towards resilient infrastructure on hilly settlements. Our study concentrates on the Western Ghats region in Kerala, one of the most frequent landslide prone mountain ranges in India. The lack of a reliable landslide susceptibility map in the Western Ghats has led to poor quantification of risk associated with rainfall induced landslides to the road networks. The study introduces a framework to improve the susceptibility mapping by performing probabilistic slope stability analysis. This would eventually lead to better risk management planning and evacuation strategies during such catastrophes. We were awarded CDRI Fellowship 2021. We have conducted the research for the efficient disaster response for the Hawkesbury River region 
and Napian Valley in Australia. CDRI Fellowship has greatly added value into our research and we have managed to publish high quality articles in this domain as well. We really acknowledge and appreciate the step of CDRI in supporting the researchers in this domain around the globe. Uh, this is a high frequency transmitting and receiving radio designed for amateur radio frequency bands. During disasters, when all modes of communication fail, amateur radio works. Amateur radio operators will quickly go there during a disaster and ensure communication, reducing mortality, morbidity, and infrastructure losses, which we are writing a white paper and CDRI will help in advocacy. We are investigating on innovative structural protection system for resident community against multiple hazards. The endeavor in which we are developing cost-effective sustainable technologies for hospital buildings to ascertain their safety against various potential hazards and improve resilience against extreme events such as earthquake, wind and fire, which is directly relevant to save invaluable human lives. The Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure has been extending keen support through the CDRF Fellowship which has helped in establishing research collaboration with Professor Tracy Breaker from the University of California at Berkeley. I'm a fluvial geomorphologist interested in capturing the dynamics of global rivers. I use satellite imagery to understand the risks that river-related hazards pose to people and to infrastructure. As part of the CDRI Fellowship, I have been developing a web-based application to map and measure shifts in the position of large rivers in the Philippines. The aim of the project is to improve the resilience of infrastructure to the risks from geohazards. Thank you to the CDRI program and to all collaborators involved in the project. This project uses Majoli, a river island in Assam. This adaptive strategy helps the local to cope with the flooding and thrive their seasonal demands that, than the relocation of the person. Also, this project involves a net zero model for fresh and wastewater management into the system, achieving self-sustenance and scoping for integration of floating farms and energy system through community participation. India is witnessing its most significant urban expansion in history. Supporting this volume of urbanization requires significant investments in all major infrastructure systems. Hence, the role of urban planning becomes pivotal in taking a long-term integrated view of infrastructure resilience. We are developing a risk-informed urban planning framework. Through our framework, we hope to support the existing development planning process of the city in three ways. First, identify the range of disaster and climate variables in the short and long term. Second, assess their broad spatial impacts on major infrastructure systems. And third, connect them to appropriate planning projects. Our CDRA Fellowship project is developing an index-based tool which will identify the first order um, risk assessment as well as uh, the zonation of the critical infrastructure in the Eastern Economic Corridor in Thailand. Thanks to CDRI Fellowship for encouraging and supporting the risk and resilience related research in the region. Our research focuses on integrating plans and strengthening communications through machine learning. So we have developed a smart application, which is a think tank for emergency managers and planners. And it's an intelligent application with uh, natural language processing where we have taught the machine to learn and understand several hundred emergency management concepts. So we've enjoyed being a part of the first cohort of CDRI's fellowship program and this opportunity has helped us take plan integration uh, to the next level and we look forward to continuing our research to build a comprehensive uh, smart knowledge management portal for governments to streamline their business applications and to execute tasks efficiently during uh, disaster situations. In Nepal, thousands of landslides occur in the rainy season. The problem is we build infrastructure where we believe it's profitable, but overlook landslides that could impact throughout its life cycle, creating huge losses in the long run. We mapped past landslide locations over several years, and we found that more than half of the landslides are located on roads. We're developing a web portal to disseminate this data set and the map for researchers and decision makers. Our study is on risk informed school evaluation tool. We consider school as a critical infrastructure, which is often used as a shelter point during disaster times. While choosing schools for our children, we often neglect disaster resilience aspect of the school so that we want to explore through this study. I am very much thankful to CDRI for providing this opportunity. Did you know that in 2020, trade, including imports and exports, accounted for over one third of India's total economy. What is even more remarkable is that nearly 95% of this trade travels through the sea. We have 12 major ports and over 200 non-major ports 
which are spread across our vast coastline and all of them are critical for India's economy. In this context, the Government of India last year unveiled its Grand Maritime India Vision 2030 which is focused on building new old class ports, modernizing existing ports and promoting port-led industrialization. And with support of the 2021 CDRI Fellowship, we are conducting a study to assess the impacts of climate change on India's port infrastructure and operations to generate practical and implementable solutions that could be adopted by individual port authorities and also the government of India at the policy level to make our port infrastructure more resilient in the face of accelerating climate change. For the CDRI Fellowship, my team members Meghna, Ananya, Akanksha and I are exploring the potential of a participatory monitoring and evaluation framework using social audits, which puts the users of the infrastructure at the forefront of monitoring, evaluation and learning to build resilience. As economists, my team is interested in exploring the participatory approaches for governance, for disaster resilience, and CDRI has been an excellent platform to start this journey. For a young social scientist, the fellowship provides a unique platform to learn from experienced researchers from across countries and fields. This is indeed a great moment of celebration for us. And we would have really liked all our fellows to join us uh, physically here today. Unfortunately, that's not been possible, but don't be disappointed. We have some of the fellows who did make it to Delhi. Thank you for joining us today here in the studio. So let's hear from the horse's mouth. Um, I have some questions for all of you and I'll take the liberty of posing them to you. I'll uh, address you first, Srishti. You are an all woman team in this fellowship uh, project. What was it to be an all woman team? What was the experience like? Um, so Mona, so um, it was a conscious decision to build an all woman team of young economists. Uh, thank you. Uh, and our experience was unique in two ways, in terms of how we did the research when we went out in the field in rural villages in India. We placed the women at the center of our village meetings and we were able so we had more uh, discussions on water security as a result. And the second, which was very interesting for us, was when we spoke to the government functionaries in the, in the states. And uh, they were very excited to see young women come and speak to them. For example, we spoke to a woman who was a district resource person. We were able to have very free-flowing conversations with them. And she provided us with great insights uh, into the monitoring and evaluation process itself. So uh, we are even more excited now going in as women in resilience uh, than we were when we first applied. So it's been a great experience. Awesome. Thank you, Srishti. Women for resilience. I think three cheers to that. <laughs> Thank you, Srishti. I'll turn to another lady colleague of ours, Chime. Chime, we'd like to hear from you uh, your reflections on the fellowship process itself. How did it help, not help? What is the value the CDRI Fellowship Program brought to you? Thank you, Mona. <clears throat> major component of our uh, project was to conduct field study and to visit major ports of India and um, to ask the port authorities about um, how, they, how do they perceive risks posed by climate change on their port in infrastructure and operations. And also we try to understand how uh, can we make port more um, resilient and these field trips were uh, able to conduct only because of uh, the uh, patronage of CDRI and our uh, endorsement institution, which is National Maritime Foundation. In other words, uh, the fellowship, CDR fellowship has opened doors for us, which uh, would not have been otherwise possible. And also, uh, this uh, project is conducted in India for the first time, and um, we, it was really important for us to have a very strong methodology. And in that uh, regard, our expert um, team, uh, the technical expert groups, um, member groups, uh, Dr. Hassan and Dr. Reedy also helped us um, extremely, was helpful uh, and providing guidance um, and also uh, in making sure that we have a very strong methodology. It was really helpful. 
Thank you. Thank you, Chime. Thank you very much. And on behalf of CDRI, I, I receive your kind words with grace. Thank you very much uh, for that. I now would like to zoom in to um, Koshal, who's joining us virtually. We've heard about, we've heard the mention of the communities of practice a couple of times this morning. Uh, Koshal, very eager to hear from you. What's about the communities of practice? Well, yeah, All among the many features, yeah, thank you. Among the many features of the fellowship program, I get to speak about the, uh, the community of practice. That's my favorite one. Thank you, Dr. Mona. Uh, so it's, uh, it's basically a biweekly discussion series that we held within among our fellows. Uh, here we interact with the fellows, we discuss our research and also provide constructive feedbacks to each other. So I was basically involved in two of them, like nature-based solutions and capacity development. We ultimately decided to merge them together and to get a, big, a larger community engagement. Uh, here we shared knowledge materials. We also shared other opportunities like fellowships, grants, and also uh, other professional development opportunities. Uh, well, the aim was co-learning and to help the community members grow academically and professionally. Uh, we also invited some guest speakers uh, and we have been documenting the discussions. So it's helping us grow the body of knowledge and also strengthen our networks. So it's a tiny fraction of my reflection to say to this wonderful uh, year of uh, first cohort of the CDRF fellowship program and the community of practice. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Mona. Thank you very much, Koshal. Uh, from CDRI perspective, uh, this was another big moment for us when the community of practice took shape and the leadership that we have seen uh, you know, in our fellows in running the community itself, in bringing the knowledge resources. We are really, really appreciative and very optimistic. I know, you know we'll, we'll go a long way with you guys. Thank you very much, uh, Koshal, and to all of you who have been involved in the community of practice. I now turn to Pushp. I have a plain vanilla question for you. What happens to your project once the fellowship ends? Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Mona. So I, our project was uh, focused on uh, assessing climate change risks to and the resilience of India's port infrastructure and operations. And I'll just share one anecdote with you that, you know, uh, as Shimi mentioned that we had uh, conducted a number of field studies. And during the field studies, what we kind of very quickly realized was that when you speak to the port authorities uh, and how and the connection between environment and port, their uh, emphasis is largely on how the port is affecting the environment in the sense that reducing their carbon emissions, reducing their pollution and, and so on. But there isn't uh, a lot of emphasis on how the environment might affect the port uh, in the sense uh, of the changes that we are experiencing in extreme weather events and also uh, sea level rise due to climate change. So uh, we also very quickly realized that the time that we had, which was only a few days to interact with them, was not enough uh, to you know, uh, kind of create the kind of adaptation uh, strategies that, as uh, Professor uh, Nishikawa mentioned, how do you implement that? So in order to take that next step, we need to have you know, more close collaborations with the port authorities. And uh, you know, fortunately, we also got a good, lot of good feedback from the port authorities to do exactly that. Uh, to have a you know a long term project and uh, go into the nitty gritties of things and and create adaptation strategies uh, another way in which we can exp uh, you know take this forward is that in addition to going deeper uh, we can simultaneously also go wider and and try to conduct you know like a pan india study and uh, go uh, beyond the few ports that we visited include major ports non major ports uh, and also perhaps take a regional approach where you have uh, sharing of best practices among different countries and, and you know how we can as a region go forward together. Uh, so there are very uh, you know exciting opportunities going forward and, and hopefully we continue this work with the CDRI in close collaboration uh, with uh, our other partners also and, and you know really take this forward. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Push. This is brilliant, and this is exactly the offer I was going to make. Let's stay engaged and let's see how we can you know scale up, scale out and get good things out there where they're needed. Thank you for all the effort. I now turn to our friend Shuja, who's joined us from Assam. What are your future plans? Yeah, so currently uh, our project was regarding the floating architecture and we were trying to implement uh, this kind of infrastructure in the rural areas. 
where there is a flood and uh, so we now basically focus to implement it on the ground so we are trying to talk to the ngos and the stakeholders one such ngo is basically ayang trust that is uh, already uh, in talks with us and we will be implementing in the near future also we uh, have a vision to talk to the urban local bodies all over the india and uh, to implement these kind of infrastructure to cater the floods and also uh, try to introduce the energy and the water parts so that these structures can be self-sufficient and self-reliant. That's the idea. Thank you. Thank you, Shuja. That's great. And to close this segment, in keeping with the theme of our conference this year, I turn to Ananya. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. What do you see as the role of people and their institutions in promoting resilience of infrastructure coming out of your project? Uh, so when we think about disaster resilient infrastructure, it's critical to think about the institutions that are going to deliver this infrastructure. And social scientists have been emphasizing on the need to design these institutions carefully. So uh, in our project, as Rishti has mentioned earlier as well, we've decided to look at participatory monitoring and evaluation institutions, and especially those that have been led by the community. So uh, we know that, for instance, the lived experience of the community is critical for a long-term evaluation of infrastructure. And so that's the kind of institutions that we study and we look at the features of these institutions. So for instance, uh, we look at the continuity of the m &E process and how uh, it has to be present over its entire life cycle of the infrastructure, how uh, we need a long-term engagement with the community, which takes over 10 to 15 years for capacity building of uh, evaluators, both within and outside the community. So we're very excited actually about this uh, edition of ICDRI because uh, of its people-centric approach uh, emphasis. So thank you for that. Thank you, Ananya. The future is with the people and women. <laughs> I'm taking that liberty. Thank you very much. And with that, we close this uh, segment. Congratulations again to the first cohort. We are very happy you've traveled this journey and you've done it so beautifully. Congratulations from all of us at CDRI. Thank you. And now we are getting closer to the big moment. Uh, I would turn to Professor Jim Hall uh, to share his experiences of the selection of the second cohort as a part of the international jury. Uh, Professor Hall, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much indeed. And I should say, first, what a great uh, pleasure and honor it's been to be part of the jury for this year's cohort. And also how exciting it's been to, to hear um, from last year's cohort just now, to hear of their experiences and the enormous amount that they've gained by participating in this fellowship program. Yeah. But um, for this year, uh, the, the fellowship program is taking shape and gaining even more momentum. We received 160 applications for fellowships from 18 member countries. And uh, so we had a, quite a task on our hands uh, in terms of reviewing and uh, shortlisting these applications. Um, and in fact, we went through them in a, a three-tier process amongst the, the jury. And um, we managed to identify 15 fellowships um, from 10 countries. And it's very pleasing to see that amount of uh, uh, national diversity amongst the, uh, the cohort, as well as uh, a pleasing amount of gender diversity as well. Um, the uh, applications were invited across the themes of early warning uh, and decision support systems, resilient standards, nature-based solutions, risk finance, and health infrastructure resilience. So really spanning the scope of topics of resilient infrastructure and um, bringing in the particular uh, dimension of health infrastructure in the light of the uh, the challenges faced by health 
systems during the COVID pandemic and the lessons which might be learned for the resilience of those crucial infrastructure systems in the future. And as with the, the first cohort and what we've heard already from um, the fellows of the first cohort, the emphasis was on um, identifying um, very practical problems and innovative solutions actionable in responding to those problems. And uh, of course, many of these problems are, are potentially vast and extraordinary challenges for the world. Um, but we had to see a clear line of sight between what was being proposed um, and a potential solution, a potential way of scaling up the, uh, the, the response. And that's a, a, a real challenge given the complexity of resilient infrastructure um, problems that we face, but we found a, uh, a, a great number of really innovative solutions. So it was a, a challenge to judge between them. And uh, though it was challenging, we're really delighted with the set of projects um, that we've been able to support, that we've chosen to support, and also the, the, the set of people, this uh, enthusiastic, vibrant, um, diverse set of people, I think will, will really benefit from this scheme. Um, whilst also benefiting the world in providing solutions um, to uh, challenges of infrastructure resilience. And also, and crucially, I think, building um, a human capacity in nations around the world and building this network of fellows which have learned so much from each other. So um, it's been, as I say again, wonderful to take part in, in this uh, current cohort. And I very much looking forward to the announcement of the awardees. Thank you, Professor Hall. Thank you very much for joining us at an hour that is rather early for you. Uh, we much appreciate this. Um, our uh, juror from the United States, Ms. Marjorie Green, could not join us uh, virtually or in person, and she has sent a recorded message for all of us. May I request that to be played, please? Hello, my name is Marjorie Green. I'm one of the jury members for this CDRI project, speaking to you from California. It was my privilege to be involved in the selection of this current cohort, and we're very much looking forward to the innovative and feasible solutions that the cohort develops addressing existing and emergent issues in disaster resilient infrastructure across the world. We're especially interested in how the cohort develops solutions that can be applied to solve on the ground and real world issues in resilient infrastructure. And we're confident that many of the results and learnings generated by these projects will inform and enrich the larger body of knowledge in disaster resilient infrastructure. Two of my colleagues from the jury are now going to announce the winners, the awardees for the 2022-2023 cohort. And I offer my hearty congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Marjorie, and the wait is over. It's my honor to invite Professor Nishikawa and Professor Sinha to announce the awardees of the CDRI Fellowship Program 2022-23 on behalf of the jury. Over to you.
I'd like to first introduce the, the, the group. The first group, it's uh, Ms. Bellen de Mazen and also Mr. Kleber Espinoza, uh, focusing on water collection, storage, and treatment system in a floating community space in the Peruvian Amazon. Thank you. The uh, second uh, fellow awardee is Ms. Uh, Robin Allison Haggis uh, from uh, UK, from the University of Oxford. And uh, her topic of uh, fellowship research is nature-based solutions for resilient infrastructure systems. Okay, the third group is Mr. Daigo Kawabe and Dr. Vasilis Sahosis. On the topic is real-time score detection and prediction of structural performance and safety. Uh, the next awardee is uh, Mr. Saurabh Gupta from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. And uh, his topic of research will be financial decision framework for infrastructures based on disaster damage rating models using machine learning approaches. The next group is a group of three members, uh, Dr. Alondra Shamor, Dr. Thomas uh, Eshavegurun, and Ms. Natalia Nieto. The topic is managing and financing risk for resilient Rural Road Networks, Standards Recommendations Under a Multi-Hazard Approach. Uh, the next uh, awardee uh, is a group of four people, four researchers from Bhutan. Uh, the topic they are uh, going to work on is Risk Assessment and Hazard Mapping of Bhutan's Power System Network and Infrastructure. And the members are Mr. Cheku Dorji, who is from the Royal University of Bhutan, Mr. Namge Tenzin, also from the same institute, Mr. Chetan Shering from Bhutan Power Corporation Limited, and Mr. Nima Dupka, Dukpa, also from the Royal University of Bhutan. The next awardee is Dr. Sasi Kumar Navaratam. Uh, his uh, topic is robust approach to assessing post-fire structural behavior of high-rise mass timber buildings. Uh, the next group of fellows are from Japan, uh, Dr. Rubel Das from uh, Nippon Key Coal Limited, Mr. Masaki Nakano, also from the Nippon Coil, uh, Kiel Coal Limited, and Mr. Tetsuro Goda, also from the same uh, company. And they are working on a framework for evaluating bridge network resilience by considering socio technical attributes. Uh, the next group is from Sri Lanka uh, Dr. Mad Herbs Hashita Herat and Dr. Jayanta Eparachich. Uh, the topic is development of a distributed optical fiber system network based condition monitoring system to alert road collapses. Uh, the next awardee is from India, Dr. Rakesh Kumar. Uh, he is a professor at the Sharda University in Greater Noida near Delhi. And the topic of his research is flood disaster resilient hydraulic design of bridges exposed to climate change. The next awardee is Ms. Kyla Anderson from Canada. The topic is uh, constructed wetlands for wastewater treatment plant resilience. The next fellowship awardee is a group of uh, four researchers from uh, Bangladesh and Japan. And the topic of their research is evaluation of cyclonic disaster resilience of coastal healthcare infrastructure in Bangladesh. And they are proposing to take a special comparison with Japan 
in order to see how the lessons could be cross learned and the the topic the researchers are Ms. Gulsan Ara Praveen from from uh, Osaka, Japan. Mr. Muhammad Anwarul Abedin from Bangladesh. Uh, Ms. Nina Takashino from Osaka, Japan, and Ms. Mritika Basu from Kyoto, Japan. Uh, the next awardee is Mr. Uh, Pratik Arora from the United States. The topic is resilience of power grid infrastructure with renewables to extreme events in a changing climate. Uh, the next awardee is from the United States, Mr. Joseph Toland. And the topic of his research is a new transportation disruption matrix for household food and water, water resource accessibility in earthquakes. Uh, the next, or not the last, but the least, not the least, is the group of four researchers. It's Mr. Vinay Shimpi, Dr. Madappa uh, Siva Subramanian, Dr. Nidhi M, and Dr. Shamsher Bahadur Singh, and Dr. Nikolaos Nikitas from India. Uh, their topic is machine learning based unified seismic vulnerability prediction model for the heritage minarets of India. What an interesting topic. Thank you very much, uh, Nishikawa san, Professor Sina. Again, a heartiest congratulations to all the fellows of the second cohort from all of us here at CDRI. To close this session now, I invite Mr. Kamal Kishore, the Indian co-chair of CDRI's executive committee, to share his perspectives about the program and also offer a word of thanks to our international jurors. Kamal, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mona. And it is uh, really delightful to be here uh, this morning at this uh, event. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, the fellows uh, of the first cohort. Uh, it was really wonderful, really energizing to hear you speak, uh, to watch that video as well. So, so good job. And, uh, you know, I would like to say that once a CDRI fellow, always a CDRI fellow. So, you know, stay, stay connected. Uh, you know, you have the platform of uh, the community of practice. Uh, you have, you know, CDRI is your home. Uh, you can come and visit us anytime you like. You can discuss ideas with us and we can look at how we can build collaboration together. And then, of course, heartiest congratulations to this year's cohort. The, the announcement has just been made. And there is one uh, very interesting thing I'm observing, which is a change from the last time to this time, not just the money. Uh, it is that I am seeing that... Um, there are increasingly uh, projects which are actually two country collaborations. Uh, you know, it may be, you know, uh, you know, a Nepali student studying in Japan, so they did a Nepal Japan thing, uh, or it is, you know, looking at a problem which is of interest to more than one country. That's really great. I think if we can sort of do more of that, that would be uh, wonderful. So, uh, really, uh, you know, this is uh, one of the key priorities of CDRI to support uh, the development of capacities, having a large number of people networked, working on problems uh, of disaster resilient infrastructure. So you are part of a growing global community. Uh, those of you who were there in the inaugural ceremony uh, of the program yesterday, uh, our Prime Minister, in his inaugural speech, made a special mention of fellows and fellowship program and its importance of, you know, uh, the, the need to develop a global network. So this is really something we attach a lot of importance to. This is applied research. We really hope that, you know, uh, CDRI will also have opportunities to help you scale these things wherever it is possible, you know, the work 
to single out just one, uh, the work that is happening on port infrastructure and you know the insights that you've got. I think it must not remain with the publication that you have um, produced, but also taken to the field and see how we can actually operationalize it. So it's really, uh, really great. And we will continue to work with you and, you know, to the CDRI fellows, my, uh, you know, I have only two things to say, well done. And the second thing is once a CDRI fellow, a CDRI fellow forever, um, wherever you go, you'll be doing our work. Uh, so uh, with that, I should uh, really acknowledge uh, with uh, a lot of gratitude the uh, the commitment and engagement that uh, our international jury has uh, shown. Two of us, uh, two of them are in the room today in studio here. Uh, others have joined uh, virtually. Uh, Dr. Charlie Benson, then Professor Jim Hall, uh, Marjorie Green. I think these are, you know, these are the global best, you know, they are leaders in this space and the fact that they have taken time, you know, uh, you know, last year and this year and the future years to engage with this process and really guide this. It's not just, you know, evaluating the applications, but also nurturing the process. So, you know, your nurturing guidance, you know, will go a long way in coming up with a program which will be there for a long time and which will have its own credibility which will be a force for you know force of change you know for the better uh, in this world so you know you're really you know your fingerprints are already there on this uh, initiative and they'll continue to be there so really you know huge uh, thank you from our side uh, I think that's all I have to say. I just also want to say that on in this space of supporting research and supporting uh, learning, supporting education, this is something that CDRI is taking very specific, deliberate steps. We have a program that we are developing with UK universities through British Council to look at how we can bring in more and more uh, elements of uh, disaster resilient infrastructure systems in educational programs in institutions of uh, tertiary learning uh, so so it's going to be you know it's this is an area of work which is only going to expand for uh, cdri supporting applied research supporting opportunities for higher education in this space thank you thank you very much it's been a pleasure with having uh, being with you this morning thank you Thank you very much, Kamalji. With this, we come to the end of the session. Uh, thanks very much to our very special guests here in the studio and uh, our jurors who joined virtually. Thanks also to our audience for joining us here uh, in the studio and virtually. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next session at 10.30 IST.